given among men, whereby we must be what? Must be saved. Not might be saved, but there's a must in there. You and I, we must be saved. Amen. We must be reconciled back to God. We must be redeemed back to God. And the only one who can do that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One name, one name under heaven only, and his name is Jesus. Turn back, we look again to Acts chapter 13 and verse 1, and page 1305. And we're going to look down there at verse 27. He says right here, listen to this very carefully. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, they didn't know Jesus, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, have fulfilled them in condemning him. On the Sabbath day in the synagogue, those people that preached, amen, the ones that were the teachers and the preachers, they taught and preached from the Word of God. Amen. But they did not have the understanding of the Word of God. Right. You know why? Because they didn't have the Holy Ghost that shows us and draws us and teaches us all truth. So they did not understand who Jesus was when He came into Jerusalem. That's right. They didn't understand when He raised the dead. They didn't understand when He healed the sick, when they gave sight to the blind, when He healed the leper. They didn't understand all these things. But these things are written in the Scriptures, in Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and other Scriptures, and they read them in the synagogues. <coughs> they read them in the synagogue every Saturday without understanding. But if they had to understand that, they would have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yeah. They would have received Him as their King, and God would have brought the kingdom in. But because they did not understand what they do, they crucified the Son of God. Right. The Son of Glory. Amen. Now, we're going to look down also next page on verse 33. On 1307, verse 33. And it says, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that He hath raised up Jesus again. And it is also written in the second psalm. Just written in the second psalm. Yeah. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. It's in the second psalm in the Old Testament. There in the word of God, how God hath begotten him. The son of God, amen, which testifies in the word of God. But they had no understanding of it. Why? They did not have the spirit of truth. Yeah. They did not have that understanding. Now if you understand these things, that's because God has given you that understanding. He's given you that knowledge. Not to puff you up, but to bring you to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Not to puff you up, not to cast you away, but to bring you to Himself right. that you might be saved. Amen. Amen. Now, why is that? Look down there on that same page, verse 38 and 39. The Bible says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, who? Jesus. Jesus, amen. Is preached unto you what? The forgiveness of sins. Amen. amen. That is such a blessing. Amen. Yes. Well, you know what we do? We come here to preach Jesus. Amen. We don't come here to lift up the church. We don't come up here to lift up good works. We don't come up here to lift up water baptism. Amen. We come up here to lift up the name of Jesus, amen. the only one that can forgive us of our sins. Amen. Now look down there in verse 39. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen. Those commandments that were given on Mount Sinai, they have no power to justify a soul. You know why? Because we sinned. Yeah. And we've broken those laws. If we could have kept those laws, we could be justified by doing the law. And we never broke the law. But there's not a single man born except for Jesus Christ that has never sinned. Right. Not a man, a woman, a child, or any person Amen. in the human race that has not sinned. Yeah. That's why He's the only one that can forgive us our sin because He never sinned. Amen. Amen. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit tonight about reasons people don't fear <coughs> God. Why don't people reverence God? We worship everything else. No. Why don't we reverence God, worship God, desire God? 
But one reason is people don't believe there is a God. And I'm not going to go there, but if you don't believe there's a God, you're in trouble with God. But one day you're going to stand before God. Amen. And I think also that people don't get close to God. You know, as I was, God was doing some things about this sermon, about this message. And I got to thinking about the sun that shines in the sky. You don't know the sun that lights this world? You know, we don't fear that sun, do we? Do we? No, we don't. But you know what I was looking at some of the statistics of the sun. You know the sun, if you could put 1,300,000 planets the size of Earth in the sun? Can you get your mind around that? 1,300,000 planets the size of this Earth you can set inside that sun that shines that gives light to this Earth. I got to think, my, my, what a great God. I wouldn't think about the sun. I'm thinking about the God who created that sun. Amen. That deserves the glory and the reverence. And you see, we're far away from that sun where God put it so that we can live. Yeah. You see? And the thing is, if we got closer to that sun, we burn up. Yeah. And I started thinking, well, how hot is that sun? Yeah. And I Googled it. And on Google it says, the heat on the sun is 9,000. 930 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. Y'all remember this summer? It got 107 here and 105. And went three digits for a month. Everybody was dropping. <laughs> I mean, the sun was just zapping everybody's strength. Mm -hmm. You go out in the sun, you get burned. Can you imagine if you was on a spaceship traveling toward the sun, how much fear you put you in you? How afraid you would be of being burned up? You see, that's kind of like God. God is so far away that we're not destroyed by His glory in these physical bodies. And I'm talking about the God of creation that created everything. And He created that. That's just one star. Can you get your mind around that? I can't get my mind around that, really. The creation of God is far beyond me. And I, and, I, and I marvel. I marvel when I look at that sun. I can't even look at it directly because it burns my eyes. That's right. And I think about the sun that God created. And I think the glory of God Himself. Yes. The God who created that sun. And I fall down and worship Him. You say, why? Because I reverence God. Yes. If you will turn to page 1453. One four. That's Revelation chapter one. Look what happens here. Revelation chapter one, page one four five three. We're going to start in verse nine. Now this is John the Apostle. Think about this. John the Apostle. He ate with Jesus Christ. He traveled the dusty roads in Jerusalem and Samaria, following the Lord Jesus Christ. He was even. Uh, invited to go up to, the, to, to that mountain of transfiguration. John, James, and Peter to see the transformation of Jesus. Yeah. He saw all these things and he is the apostle that he wrote in John that, that Jesus loved. And he even laid his head on the breast, on the chest of Jesus, resting on Jesus' chest at the supper table. Do you think he knew Jesus? Oh yeah. Let's see what happened here. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that's called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was being persecuted. He'd been put on an island. Okay, it was like a, it was like a prison island where they worked him in the caves, uh, uh, in the mines. He says, I was in the spirit of day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. When somebody speaks to you, you kind of turn and walk. 
for a conversation, right? Somebody speaks to you, turn to talk to them, get them Right? So look what it says here. He says, I turned to see the voices make with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like a two, who? The Son of Man. When Jesus Christ walked this world, he claimed himself to be who? The Son of Man. So he saw Jesus in a glorified garment. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the path with a golden girl. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were the flame of fire. You want to know what Jesus looks like? This is what Jesus looks like. And his feet, like in the fine grasses, they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun is shining in his strength. When I saw him, what did he do? I fell at his feet as dead. He was in such reverence and fear and in shock to see the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified state that he fell down as if dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. That's right. That's an amazing thing. You know, this one who was set with Jesus, talked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, slept underneath the stars with Jesus, and yet he fell as if dead because of the fear of God, the reverence of God. I want to tell you something. You see Jesus, we're going to fall down there too late. Yeah. Now, why, the reason why people, they don't reverence God is because they don't know God and they've never been in the presence of God. Yeah. That's the bad thing. <clears throat> well, if you know God, there's going to be a change in your life. Amen. Now, turn with me if you will. Page 1416 in the Word of God. That's Titus chapter 1, verse 16. In the Word of God. You see, people say, Well, I'm saved, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, when you have a relationship with God, it's going to change you on the inside. You know, it's going to. But those ones that Look what it says here in verse 16. Is everybody there? 1, 4, 1, 6. Yeah. Chapter 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God. But in works, what do they do? They deny Him. When God saved you, if you're saved, He washed away your sin in His own blood. In the name of Jesus. He died for your sin. That's what Jesus Christ did. <coughs> and He was buried and He rose again the third day and ascended back up to heaven. Before he did Man, back up to heaven. Right on the yeah. It says they deny Him. Being what? Abominable and disobedient unto every good work of revelation. There's a lot of people today, they preach Jesus. But you know what? They don't live submitted lives unto the Lord. And you don't do that to be saved. You do that because you are saved. And those ones that claim the name of Jesus and live ungodly, wicked lives, they better look inside and see if they really know God. Amen. You better look inside and see if you really have a relationship with God. That's what it's all about. Now this resurrection, that's a miracle. Is that not a miracle? That is a miracle. And you know, I was talking to a man like on the 10th, I think it was, or three days ago or so. His name was Matt. He came to talk to me and wanted to sell me some windows and stuff. I, I, I got out of that phrase. But he said he couldn't believe. He said, I can't believe because of Noah's home. He said, I can't believe because of the party of the Red Sea. Can I ask you a question? Think about this Bill Hart. What is greater? The, the Noah's Ark or the resurrection of the dead? The 
him. He is the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. What is greater, the party of the Red Sea where Israel went across on dry ground, or the raising of the dead? To me, in my heart and soul, is the raising of the dead. Amen. That is the greatest miracle of all beyond next to creation. When God spoke everything into existence. Everything into existence. So I see here that they profess that they know God, but they deny God in their works. And they live reprobate lives. They live lives in sin. I'm, I'm not going to tell you you're going to be perfect. Because you're not. But we got this fleshly body. And this flesh body wants his desire of sin. That's why the word of God says, mortify the deeds of the body. Right. But you know what? You cannot be sinless in this world. You can sin less, but you can't be sinless. Because you got sin in you. Yeah. Not until the day when we see Jesus in his glorified oh, body. <laughs> That's when we'll be sinless. Yeah. And in a glorified body of our own. Okay? But these ones, they profess that they know God and they deny God by the way that they live, by the way they speak, by their desires, by their mind, by all their actions. Okay? And that says they don't know God. Why? Because their heart is far from them. Look on page 1144. Go to Matthew chapter 15. Now these verses have been preached here before, but I think it's still good to go over them over them and over them. Here's the problem with man. This people, 1144, chapter 8, chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. This people draw nigh unto me with what? Their mouth and honor me with what? Their lips, but their heart is what? Far from me. He says, in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Yeah. We have a lot of people that are religious, but not a lot of people that are born again. It does not profit you to be religious. Religion cannot get you into heaven. Because right. your heart is far from Him. And you don't desire the things of God, but you might desire the things of religion. Amen. That's right. You can try to be holy in your own self and be religious, but what you and I need is the righteousness of God in Christ yes. Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. And if we don't have that, no matter how close we think we're drawn to God, if our hearts are far away from Him and we worship Him not in spirit and truth, but by the doctrines of men, and that's the problem with America today. No. We are a superstitious country. Not a religious country. We are a superstitious country. We swallow everything. We believe everything but what the Word of God says. That's the problem with America today. The thing that will straighten out America is the Word of God. And men that get up and live the Word of God and men that are not afraid to stand upon the Word of God. Especially in these days when everybody has yeah. gone crazy. Yeah. Everybody's gone crazy. Now, how do you know when somebody is not in fear of God or in reverence of God? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. First of all, there's no conviction of sin. Yeah. No conviction of sin. You can do whatever you want, do the way you want, and have peace in your life. And there's no conviction. That's a big problem. That's a big problem. Look at the wheel at John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. And that's on page 1251. 1251. And this is God the Son speaking these words. Okay? It's in red, and it's spoken by the Lord of glory Himself. Amen. Look what it says there. Verse 19. I'm not going into 316 and 17 and 18, but I'm talking about no conviction of sin. Amen. 
And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. And men love darkness yeah. rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be what? Reproved. You see, when you trust Jesus, and I, I pray that you have, and you receive that Spirit of God inside you, that Spirit of God will convict you of your ungodly lifestyle. Amen. It will show you the truth and lead you into paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Right. Not to bring glory to yourself. Yes. We're not up here to bring glory to ourselves. We're up here to point everything to Jesus. Okay. That's what it's all about. Everything we preach and teach and talk about is to Jesus. Amen. To lift up Jesus, to bring glory to Jesus. Even in His yes. creation, Amen. I am truly amazed at what I learned about the Son. I really am. It's hung out there on nothing. Yeah. But that doesn't amaze me as much as my Creator, Amen. my Sustainer, the One who designed me. He designed every one of you. Do you know that? He put, he put life in you, a soul. Not like an animal, but a soul that has reasoning and understanding. That's what man is. But when Adam fell, that spirit of God in him, it departed and died. That's why I said we must be regenerated by the Holy Ghost. Look at John chapter 16, verse 7, 11, page 1275. Talking about the Spirit of the living God. That's what we need. We only can receive that in Christ Jesus. Not in religion. In Christ Jesus. Yes. 1275. Is everybody there? Chapter 16. And verse 7 through 11. The Bible says, Nevertheless, this is Jesus Christ again speaking. I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, that's the Holy Ghost, he will what? Reprove the world of sin. He will reprove your sin in you. He will testify and convict you of your sin. Right. And He will bring you eventually out of that sin. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. But God did deliver me of drinking and smoking overnight. And I was addicted. I was a drunkard. And I smoked like a chimney. And one day God delivered me out of the fear of God. Out of the fear of God only. Yeah. Didn't save me that day. But He did put the fear of God in me. That's what we need, the reverence and the fear of God. Amen. So it says going on, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Amen. That's why the Holy Ghost of God came. He came to verify and testify and bear witness of the truth of God's Word, of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, turn to page 133. 1333. That's Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. Page 1333. Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. Listen to what the Word of God says. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness? God is good, amen. And forbearance, and he's forbearing, amen. Long suffering. Not knowing that the goodness of God, his goodness, leads you, what? To repentance. You see, when you receive Jesus, that's a repentant heart. God changes your heart of stone, and he gives you a heart of flesh that you might desire God. He doesn't make you like a robot. No. But the Spirit of God in you desires the things of God. Before I got saved, I didn't want to read this word. I had no 
inclination of going to church. I didn't want to go to church. I had I didn't pray. My goodness, I lived a hellion life. But when Jesus Christ came in and brought that repentance into me, then it changed my life. Amen. And I don't know how many times I've read this Bible through, and I don't brag up on myself, but that's a desire that God put in me. A natural God, a natural God-given desire that man has to worship God, to spend time with God, to live in the presence of God. Amen. And if you don't have that, there's something wrong in your soul. You're so right. far away from God. You have no fear of God. Amen. Now, if you will look on page one three seven two. That's Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven. Very familiar scripture. You see, if you don't have no fear and reverence of God, there's not going to be any change in your life. Amen. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse. What did I say? Seventeen. Amen. Look what the Bible says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Those new desires, those new hungers. You know, I look forward to being in church now. I love to be in the house of God. You know why? Because that's where my brothers and sisters, we want to forever dwell in the house of God in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Yes. That's going to be glorious. And there's not going to be no sin. There's not going to be no hatred, not no anger. There's going to be holiness and righteousness and love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. I mean, how much better does it get? But you can look inside yourself. If you think you receive Jesus and there's no change, you better get right with God. I know there's some that say, well, there is no God. And I'm sorry for you. I cannot prove that God exists. But before I go on with this message, there's things spoken in this Bible that are fantastic. They're impossible for man. And last night I was watching a, a, a program called Ron Wyatt Discoveries. Now if you don't believe that these things happen like Noah's Ark, like the departing of the Red Sea, like Mount Zion, uh, Mount Sinai on fire, I challenge you, go to YouTube and look up Ron Wyatt Discoveries and see what he discovered, which bears truth of this word. Yeah. It bears truth of it. But can I tell you something? You're not going to believe you in a man raised from the dead with Jesus Christ. That's right. It's not by sight. I mean, I thank God these things are available for men to see. I haven't seen them, but I know the truth is written in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, it's going to be a new creature, amen. Right? That's what it says there. A new creature in Christ. Now, <coughs> I want to go to Proverbs chapter 16. That's page 793. 793. I couldn't get away from Proverbs 16. I think that's one of my major. I love this. I love this. Yeah. And we're going to look at verse 6. That's page 793. It says, By mercy, and God is mercy. And truth, Jesus is truth. Iniquity is purged. Our right. sin is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men what? Depart from evil. Amen. God's mercy, God's truth. If you really believe that, it purges your what? Your sin. Because if Jesus Christ is the truth, and He is the God of mercy and grace. Do you all see that there, verse 6? Okay. He says, if you believe this and receive this, you will depart from evil. Right. doesn't say you... Might, but it says, <laughs> men depart from evil. Amen. Amen. Now you're not going to be perfect, but you know, and you're going to fall, you're going to fail. That's the part of man's nature. But when you do, 
just remember this. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. And if we confess our sins, the Bible says He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That means every day when you get up or every night when you go to bed, you can go and heal yourself and by the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Amen. Jesus, you can go right to the throne of grace to God's almighty throne where He sits right now by faith and tell Him you're sorry. Amen. And ask Him to help you and deliver you from that sin that besets you. I do it all the time. I have to do it. Yeah. Say why? Because I sin. I sin just like you. Amen. I have a besetting sin. I have also desires of this world which I don't want. But they're in me. Sit in me. Amen. Now, if you will, turn back the page. To page 791. And I, I was amazed when I, when I saw this one. Yeah. Proverbs 14, verse 16. Is everybody there? I want you to read and hear what the Word of God says. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. You read those words? That's right. what it says. But, but there's got a but in there. Yeah. But the fool rages and is confident. Oh man, there's no conviction of the Holy Ghost. Right. There's no new Christ in you that desires to follow God and do the will of God and, and, and to fight against sin and unrighteousness. Say, why? You don't have the Spirit of God. You're not born again. You've never been saved by that person. The only person who can save you is Jesus. And you've got to put your faith and trust in His shed blood. Yeah. That's what it's all about. His shed blood. If you have faith in His blood, you're still in your sin. It's not just in the name of Jesus, but it is in the gospel of Christ. How Christ died. He shed His blood. Why did He shed His blood? To wash away our sin. But that's the only way God can forgive us of our sin. Amen. <laughs> Why did He die? He never sinned. He died for your sin and my sin to pay our penalty. And He's not dead. He was buried. And what happened to Him? Anybody know? He rose. He rose. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He rose. And now I have a living Savior. I have someone at the right down the throne of God make intercession for me. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Now, when we go door knocking, I don't say anybody pray this prayer. You say why? Turn back again to Proverbs 16. That's right. Page 793 and look at 16 verse 1. Look what the Word of God says. The, pre the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is what? From the Lord. That means... When you see your need to be saved, the devil said, was my brother here preached last evening. He preached a good message on hell. Amen. If you don't see your need, if you <laughs> see your need to escape the lake of fire and the condemnation and the wrath of God, the Bible says God Himself will put the words in your heart to cry out to Him. And I don't have to say, pray this prayer. Oh, God, forgive me. And you don't have to say and repeat after me thing. But you know what? God wants to hear what's in your heart. Right. He don't want to hear my prayer given to you. That's why I don't pray for them that want to pray to Jesus. I do ask them. Do they know how to pray? They say, no. We have a track. We show it to them. It's got a prayer on the back of the track. Where they can read that prayer if they desire but I tell them God wants to hear from your heart. Yeah. He wants to hear those words that He put inside you to cry out to Him. That's right. We were door knocking last Thursday. We talked to this man, Felix. Felix Charles, we talked to him. And we asked him, he said, yeah. He said, well, you need to ask Jesus. He said, well, I don't have a faith. We get that track and said, You read this. I said, But God wants to hear from you. You know what he said? He bowed his head and he cried out to God and said, Jesus, save me. 
us. But we're going to see them and to stand upon the truth. To proclaim the truth of the gospel of Christ. To tell others. Amen. Anybody want to talk about Jesus? We got time. Hope y'all take those little booklets I put out. We don't take those like this is your life. 